Robert Skay, R-O-B-E-R-T-S-C-A-I-F-E, and I'm the pastor here at Union Missionary Baptist Church. Great. And I'm Jim Conley from the Center for Middletown Studies at Ball State, um, and I just want to begin by thanking you for sitting down with us this afternoon to talk. Uh, this is uh, a project we're calling The Civic Role of Churches in Muncie, and um, I'd just like to ask you a few questions about how you see your church uh, engaging with the community um, at this particular time and how that's developed over time uh, with this. Before we get into that, um, uh, I would like you to tell us a little bit about your faith journey, you know, how you became a pastor, um, um, describe the position you now occupy, and talk about what you think are your main responsibilities. Well, I'm the senior pastor here at Union. Um, I've been here um, in this official role since May of last year. Um, I've been a, a lifelong member of this church, grew up in this community, grew up in this church. My dad was associate pastor um, when I was growing up. Um, I've been preaching since 1995. Um, here at this church under Pastor Jackson, who retired due to health reasons. Um, he's been gone, going on four years now, um, while he was sick, and his, his uh, responsibilities here started to, started to um, suffer. Mm -hmm. uh, I filled in and was helping during that time. And then right at the end, he went ahead and retired. And then I, they asked if I would just fill in for him, and, and then they offered me the position here. Um, I was a Muncie police officer for 12 years. I was mm -hmm. the last um, seven years I was a detective. Um, and I resigned there in June of last year so I can be full-time and give all of my energies to the church. Um, it's been a tough journey, you know, um, just in transition but uh, God's been faithful. And so uh, the church is, is actually getting back on track, getting back into the swing of things. And, and it's, um, we're at a good place right now. Good, I wanna, I wanna talk about you know, the, the condition of the church and how it's uh, been developing recently. But before I do that, two things. One, you said union, and it made me think that we didn't officially say the name of the church. The official name is Union Missionary Baptist Church. Is that yes. correct? Union Missionary okay. Baptist. Great, um, and I was gonna bring this up, but since you've already mentioned it, um, I wanted to ask, I knew that you'd been a policeman, uh, and I'm curious whether you see any connection between your work as a policeman and your work as a pastor now. Yeah, there, there's, there's a connection. The only, the only difference, um, <laughs> I encounter people every single day. Mm -hmm. The only difference now is I can't arrest them, and that's, <laughs> that's about it, but um, there is definitely that connection. I learned a lot from the police department. It actually opened my eyes to a lot of, a lot of uh, things and people in our community that, mm -hmm. I, that I um, normally didn't um, pay any attention to. Uh, but when I became a police officer, it, my eyes were open. And so now in my role as pastor of this church, I still see all of that, but not in a criminal sense. I see it in more of a, a way that people just need help. And so um, now my role is different. Instead of um, trying to arrest and, and um, get them off the street, you know, I'm not trying to arrest them, but I am trying to get them off the street, street in a sense of helping them uh, to have a better life um, in Christ. Right, so is, would you say there's an advantage to having had that first experience engaging with the community and, and learning, a, I imagine, a whole lot about it? Um, that, that's helped you out now that you're a pastor? I would say yes. Mm -hmm. um, some, sometimes I would say no, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, while I was in the police department, there are a lot of people um, that just don't like me now <laughs> because I, see. I was on the police department. Right. Um, but overall, um, I just did my job, and I just let um, everything that I did um, it just speaks for itself. I didn't treat anybody wrong. I was still respectful. And, you know, I'm just at the resolve now. Um, if you don't like me because I did my job, that's okay. Um, but I, I see that, but I still, I still think that, you know, it was a great opportunity, and it also helped me to prepare for where I am today. Okay, great. So you talked a bit about uh, the fact that you think uh, Union is in a good place now. Uh, uh, one of the things we found as we've talked to the leaders of different churches in Muncie, 
uh, is that some of them at least are struggling with keeping up membership. Uh, is that an issue for, for you guys? Yes, absolutely. Um, with the economy, right. I mean, the economy was really bad even when Pastor Jackson um, was, was at his best. Our church started suffering um, due to the, I mean, with the size of our membership. We're, we were actually um, the largest black church in Muncie. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and we had uh, well over 1,900 members on our membership list. Um, and we had a pretty, a pretty large congregation. Our church was across the street and we sort of outgrew that. And, that's, and then we moved over here, we had this church built, moved over here in 2008. Um, and so our ministry was thriving. Um, the economy, uh, you know, got bad and people started moving to Texas with GM. And we had several mm -hmm. members of our church that moved down to Texas, relocated. And so, um, so we're still seeing the effects of that. And then when Pastor Jackson got sick, yeah, our membership took another hit just mm -hmm. with that. And that's normal. It happens. Um, and then... We were just in that transition uh, for about for about two and a half years, just in that transition of trying to um, recover from Pastor Jackson retiring, um, the economy being as bad as it is. And so I think that we're just in a good place um, now where the church is actually starting to get back into the mindset of ministry. And so we're moving again. Um, and and I think we'll, I'm confident that we'll get back to where um, God wants us to be. What do you mean by the mindset of ministry? The mindset, when, when, I, when we were, when Pastor Jackson went down, um, our ministry sort of stopped because we didn't know, mm -hmm. you know, even, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out our identity. Um, our pastor was gone, you know, he was here 29 years and, sure. you know, everything that we did, we went off of his direction and his leadership. And then, um, and when he went down, we were just like, what do we do now? <laughs> I see. And so um, it seemed like ministry just stopped to a point, not completely, but to, to a point. And people sort of settled in um, just that mindset of just, you know, I'm okay with, you know, just coming to church on Sundays and Bible study on Wednesdays, and that's about it. And so now we're just trying to get back into this mindset that you know any any born again christian you know our responsibility is to serve we got to work we just can't come to church on wednesday and sundays for bible study and prayer meeting and then come on sundays for worship and then go back home and just wait uh, we got to be ready to serve the community do work inside our community as well as the four walls of this church and so we're just now getting back into that mindset i just said uh, you know just preparing our mindset to serve Okay, um, I want to get into some of the ways in which uh, you guys are serving now. But before I do that, I do want to ask if other, you've mentioned the, the change in leadership. You've also mentioned the change in the local economy. Yes. Are, there, are those the key challenges or are there other challenges you think that union's facing? I think those are the two main challenges um, that our church has experienced, that, that really um, affected our church. We have some uh, you know, as with any church or any organization, we have some internal challenges that we mm -hmm. just have to just try to correct. But I think the main cause really was uh, the economy and the retirement of Pastor Jackson. With regard to the, the the economic side and the loss of population and so forth, have you adopted any particular strategies to recruit people or in response to those changes? We, we've been um, just our... Our, uh, we have a group of people that we assemble together and we try to come up with strategies on how we can recover. Um, and we've sought help from other pastors, other leaders on what we can do just where we are. Um, and so we're just, we, we've actually come up with a, a, a plan of action um, mm -hmm. just for the vision uh, Got it. that God has given for this ministry. And so we're just now into that process of, uh, you know, and of putting that all together, dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's just to figure out, you know, with this vision that we have, um, our, our vision is to be a relevant ministry through the word worship and witness. And so, um, and it just means that we're going to serve and we're going to, we're going to make sure that we're hitting all of those areas um, when we serve. And so once we get done, um, filling out and defining our mission and our vision 
then that's going to give us our direction for where we go. Okay. So when you talk about serving, I'm interested in, in first off, the, the ways, the most important ways you see the church as an institution serving its membership, its immediate yes. internal community. Are there particular things you try to do in that regard? Yes. Um, we want to start where we are. We're right in the heart of a predominantly black, um, low income community. Whitely, uh -huh. right? Yeah, yeah. whitely community. Um, we have a, an elementary school, Longfellow Elementary mm -hmm. School, that's a few bo blocks away from us. So yes, we want to start within our community, but we're not going to stay within our community. We're going to go outside the four walls of a of, of whitely neighborhood. And okay. So, um, so we're definitely looking to start. We want to start here first, and we, we have a plan of action. We've actually um, adopted Longfellow Elementary School as, as Great. you know, we, we, we have collaborations, we have partnerships. So we're going to adopt Longfellow Elementary School, and we're going to try to team up with them and, and join them in ministry. And so since, this, since we are right in the heart of Whiteley, um, we want to make sure that we try to impact our community first, and then we're just going to go out outside of Whiteley and, and join in with um, other, other churches, other organizations on where we can help. You know, I, I'm, not in, I'm not about um, so much into reinventing the wheel. If it's already working, why don't we just join right. whoever, whoever is running it and, and, and help make an impact in that, er in that way. Are there specific examples where you see Union joining other groups, either in Whiteley or beyond, and, and working on specific areas? Yeah, we've, um, we're partnering with a couple of other churches. Um, one church is all the way out on the outskirts of, of Muncie. Which church is that? It's Tabor, Tabor oh, yes. Church. Um, we're partnering with them. Uh, we're, we're praying trust, just so we can see exactly what God wants to do. So we pray um, twice a month on a Saturday. Uh, we'll, they'll come here and we'll go to their church. And then we're planning some other, other activities um, on where we can join, do ministry together um, just to try to make an impact in our community. Um, and I, I mentioned Longfellow Elementary. That's another organization that we're trying to, that we're going to, that we are actually are partnering with. Um, we want to, we want to do some mentoring there. Um, we've been going over with them since the beginning of the school year this year, <laughs> helping them at the end um, with the parking, getting the kids off the bus, um, off onto the buses to get ready to go home. Um, we've been doing that, and they'll be doing that till the 25th of August, and so they actually are wanting our help um, mm -hmm. to continue to do that. And then I'm going to meet with Mr. Moore, who's the principal there, um, within the next few weeks so we can figure out what they need and how we can join them. But then there's, there's other um, agencies and churches. First Baptist, we've, we're partnering with. Um, Pastor Wade Allen oh, yes. over there at First Baptist um, just to try to figure out what we can do. And then just, you know, not only church, but, you know, there's some organizations that we want to we wanna help with, um, motivate our minds, um, Bewley Center, the community centers, Boys and Girls Clubs, just see where we can help, you know, just be an impact. Great. Okay, so that's a pretty wide range, right? Yes. You have some religious organizations, mm -hmm. but also public and secular Absolutely. groups as well. You, so you have a lot of fingers yes. out into the community that way. Yeah, I think it's important that we that we just not only try to focus on the church. Um, I think I, I, we, we won't we won't abandon what we believe and what we know, but we just we just want to make sure that we take um, everything that we know about God. Um, and, and move into the in, into other aspects of our community. So when you collaborate with a secular organization like a school or, or um, Motivator Minds or other groups like that that aren't explicitly at least religious organizations, yes. um, how does that work? Is that something, uh, is there friction or tension because one's secular, one's religious, or does it work pretty smoothly? It works pretty smoothly. They know what we're about. Mm -hmm. um, we're not, and they know that we're not going to come there, and we're not going to just pour scriptures on people or right. anything like that, or try to lay it's not hands a preaching on event. Yeah. yeah, we're not going to do that. You know, we just, um, it's all about just uh, letting people see who you are and who's in you, 
And so, and that's what we do. We just treat people with respect. Um, if they ask us a question, then we'll give them the answer that they want, but we're just not gonna browbeat them with scripture or try to get people saved at that particular moment. And so we'll just go there and we're just welcoming. Um, we're ready to serve in whatever area that they want us to work in. And so we just go and do that and it usually works out fine. Great, great. Uh, Shifting gears just a little bit, uh, we've already talked a bit about how, in a broad sense, the economic changes that have taken place in Muncie have created challenges and perhaps opportunities uh, for your church. Uh, but I did want to ask as well whether there was, you've noticed an impact on specific members of your church, you know, families, individuals who've, who face particular difficulties, and if, if so, the ways in which Union has responded to that. Yeah, we've 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 seen just about every every situation um, due to the due to our, our economy, um, um, just to, just our economy dropping, the loss of jobs. Um, we've seen just about everything um, that a family could um, encounter. Um, and our church's responsibility, we 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 help our members. Um, we have particularly for just the members of our church, we have a benevolent fund, mm -hmm. and so. Wherever we can help in that um, in that endeavor, we we've we offer to pay f buy food. We'll pay utilities. We'll pay rent, um, and we'll do we'll do things like that. Even with some of our older members, they're not able to afford medication, so we will we'll even buy their medication for them. And so we've done that when they come. And so, um, but what what we try to do as a church is we'll we'll try to help out in whatever way we can. Spe specifically when it comes to union members we have to help uh, we have helped other people outside the church who aren't members of this church mm -hmm. um, we have helped them as well uh, but we really focus on just the members of union um, based off of because since the you know our budget has suffered right. as there's well only so many resources so, to go around so there's only so much that we can do um, but we're, we're really trying to fix that and to correct that so that we can be more of a blessing to our community Okay, great. Um, we have got a list of questions, but of course we've, we've moved around and covered a lot of them already because you've, you've gotten good answers uh, with this. Uh, I am interested in what, if you see any particular or specific role for a church that serves an African-American community and comes out of an African-American community within Muncie as a whole. You know, are there, is there a distinctive role or is there distinctive challenges that are associated with interacting with these other organizations when you come from an African-American community, whether it's involving racism or other issues? Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, there are those challenges. Um, when we try to, when we go outside of our community, uh, we, I, I, really haven't, I really haven't experienced any of them yet, but I know that they're out there uh, just with the ideas of racism, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's that's still prevalent and so right. we're going to run into that but our response and our responsibility as a as a as an African American African American church um, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we prepare all of our members that will be going out and serving in the community prepare them for every opportunity and every every experience um, that that we can think of and so our response is we're going to go out there and we're going to serve um, and if you don't receive it, that's okay. We're not going to respond back to you in a negative manner. Uh, we'll just walk away, um, gracefully walk away, and we'll make it a prayer matter. But we're just going to respond the same way. But I know that those challenges are out there. We just, it's just a matter of whether or not we're going to be prepared for them when we um, go out. So you say you prepare people here. Do you sit down and discuss how you're going to respond to particular yes. situations? No, there, we, we're actually doing, we're, we'll actually be doing some training uh -huh. uh, if when we do go out and do outreach in our community, um, not just Whiteley, but out in the Muncie community, mm -hmm. uh, there there is some training. We'll come back and 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 then we're even going to plan on debriefing. You know, just to do some. Uh, what did we experience, and how did we handle it, and what can we best do? What can we do next time to to make it a better experience for us? And so, you know, it's we did some we did some outreach last September with Revive Muncie, Revive mm -hmm. Indiana. And so we went out and did some witnessing, and so we had some we had some challenges with that, but we had some good experiences as well. And so we just came back and talked about it. And so we're just going to adopt that same 
um, format that they used, and I think that'll that's gonna that's gonna help us out in the long run. So who who does the training? Is it you and other leaders, or do you bring people in? Or well, we have we 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 have a number of we have great resources right here within our church, and so it's just a matter of whatever what is it that we're trying to do, and then we'll see those particular members who are gifted in that particular area, and we'll use them. I'll help with it. My wife, um, she's really good with um, dealing with situations like that and trainings. And so, so we'll, it'll be a, a good combination of leaders and, you know, some members of our church. Okay. Um, so we've talked a bit about the, the collaborations that you've been engaged in, and that's another area that we wanted to dip into. And we already have uh, mm -hmm. to a significant degree. I'm curious also about the responses you get when you when you offer uh, to, to help out, whether it's a school or to, to collaborate with another church, uh, whatever it might be. Do those things, in, in your experience, go smoothly um, and your support is welcomed? It sounds like that's certainly been the case uh, at Longfellow. Yeah. Uh, is that typical? Yeah, it's every time that we've approached um, either a church or an organization, they've welcomed it. You know, it's something it's something that they were actually looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, even with Longfellow, I talked to Mr. Moore and I told him, I said, look, we, we'd like to adopt your school. Um, mm -hmm. and, and he and he looked at us and he was just like, great, because there was a church that was that actually um, adopted Longfellow last year, but this year they pulled out. And so now they didn't have it. And so we came in Filled at in. the right time. And so, I mean, he was, I mean, he welcomed um, just the idea of us uh, joining them in in ministry, I call it ministry, but joining them in in what they do and serving the kids, mm -hmm. and it's the same way with other churches. Um, we're not trying to compete for membership or or anything like that. It's all about getting people saved, and so whatever church you go to, it doesn't matter to us. You know, when we go out and witness, when we did with Revive Muncie, we went with other churches. We didn't go out and tell people what church we went to. We just invited them back here, and then whatever church they ended up going to, you know, we give them a, a list of churches, and whatever church they wanted to go to, that's where they would end up. But we're not, it's not about, I'm, I'm beyond that. I don't mm -hmm. want to compete with other churches for membership because there's tons of people out there who aren't saved and who need to, who need Christ. And so um, our, our mindset and our mission is, is bigger than that. And so I'm beyond competing with people. And most churches, you know, we're, we're all on the same, same page when it comes to that. And so it's easy to work together. Okay, so that's interesting. So you see most churches have the same attitude that it's, it's about saving, it's about yeah. serving, it's not about... Yeah. building up your end of things at the expense of another's. Absolutely. It, I think that's changed over the last several years. It, it, was, a, it was a competition okay. years ago. And so um, I was so glad I wasn't a pastor of a church. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and I was a little hesitant to take this one because I was like, I don't know if anything has changed because I'm not about, you know, you got members who if, you don't, if they don't like your church or if something happens here at, at their church, they'll leave and go to another church. And so I'm not about, you know, um, jumping on bandwagons and, and joining other ministries. But, you know, it was, it was like that several years ago. But it has some, for some reason, I believe God has opened our eyes. And so it's mm -hmm. changed. And so. Do you have any sense of why that is? I think people are getting, um, getting to the point to where we're really, really um, seeing what our purpose is. Our purpose is to win people to the kingdom and to train them so that they can be able to win people to the kingdom, regardless of what church you go to. And, and I think we're starting to realize that uh, any church is not our church, it's God's church. And so mm -hmm. if we let him have his church, he's going to do whatever it is he wants to do with that church. And so, and so I think churches are getting to understand that point that it's not, it's not our church anymore. It's God's church. And so um, he'll add to and he'll take away from his church. He'll bless his church. He'll provide the finances for the church. And so we're getting to that mindset. Just the only thing we have to do is just serve and represent him. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are. So I think churches are beginning to see that now. So that brings you to another issue, a more general issue that I'd, I wanted to, to ask you about, which is 
you've been a pastor or interim pastor for several years now, but you've been a member of this church and this community for a lot longer. Yes. Um, do you see big changes in the areas we've been talking about in, in terms of how union goes about its ministry? Mm -hmm. And you seem to have a very broad understanding of what ministry constitutes. Um, do you see the, uh, big changes in the way you interact with other churches or other institutions in town, um, you know, over the last 20, 30, 40 years, you know, the time that you've been involved in this church as an adult? Absolutely. Uh, the way we did things 20, 30 years ago, it's not working now. Um, times have changed. Technology has changed. Mm -hmm. um, the people have changed. And so uh, for us to impact our community, there's going to have to be drastic changes within how we go about serving. And so it's just the whole mindset shift on what we need to do. We're not abandoning, abandoning our principles. We're, we're focused on the word. We're going to stay on we're going to stay focused on what the word is teaching and how we are to live and how we are to treat people. But the methods that we'll have to use, we're not going to blend in with the world, but we're going to, we're, we have to be a little bit more creative, a little bit more proactive um, in terms of doing that, just based off of where our world is today. It's, it's much different than what it was 20 years ago when I was coming up. I was in my 20s. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's much different. And so What are the big differences, the specific differences you see is important? Well, just the way kids are being raised now. Mm -hmm. um, parents are younger. Uh, you know, you got, you got babies raising babies. And mm -hmm. so um, we're running into, you know, it's more of a friendship instead of, a, you know, instead of them being parents. And so um, their kids are never wrong. And so we're dealing with, with, with that challenge of ministry. Um, how can we help partner with you in ministry and, and giving, put, positioning your kids to be in the best position that they can for high school and college and the workforce? How can we best serve you? Um, we're running into that challenge. How do you, how do you address that challenge? Well, we, 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 our children in youth ministry, we have a, a great staff there and volunteers. Um, and so we try to meet with the parents and we, we try to interact with them to let them know where we stand. Uh -huh. and, and we let them know that, look, this is a partnership. You know, we want to partner with you guys. We're not just going to be the only teachers in your child's lives. We want to impact, but we need you and we want to we want to come alongside of you, you know, in, in, in helping you to position your kids. And so that's one of the challenges. Um, you know, just just where the where the government is and its stance on a lot of the a lot of the new laws and um, the things that that we're experiencing um, right now. The church is the church is not popular as it as it was 20 years ago. You know, mm -hmm. the church is uh, people look at the church as being hypocrites just based off of what we believe. Just with the new challenges when it comes to um, the LGBT movement and all of that. You know, we don't hate. We don't hate people who are in same-sex relationships. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that all sin is sin. And so we don't hate that, but we can't condone it. You know? mm -hmm. And so the church's responsibility is not to kick you out of the church, but to help you to understand what the Bible teaches and, and, and what we believe about um, a same-sex relationship and to help you to position yourself so that you can be delivered from that lifestyle. And so... That's our stance, but you know, people don't see that. They see that we are we're haters and and we're kicking people out. That's not the case at all. Some churches may do that, but it's you know, it's, but not all churches do that. And so, so we've been experiencing some backlash from that. The church, not just union, right. but the church. Period. Um, and so that's another challenge that we that we dealt with. Does the church's position on those kinds of controversial issues get in the way of, of providing service or of, of collaborating with other groups in your experience? Well, in my experience, it really hasn't for us. Um, I know that it probably will in the future. Mm -hmm. um, there'll be some organizations that probably won't want to collaborate with us based off of our stance and where we stand. And I'm okay with that. That's fine. Um, but we haven't experienced any of that right now. I sometimes wonder whether the the needs and the challenges around here are so big and and so acute that 
it's, there's almost not enough. You don't have time to worry about those things. There's plenty of other issues that everybody needs, feels they need to address. Yes, that's true. That's true. And that's and that's how I am. I'm like, look, I'm not going to fuss and fight over that. You know, we got and, and, and I said the same thing about competing for members. I'm not mm -hmm. going to fuss and fight for, you know, two or three members who are already in a relationship with Christ when there's dozens and thousands <laughs> of have other people yeah. who don't even know him. I, I'm not going to do that. And the same thing with, with that. I'm not going to fuss and fight over something that's, you know, that I think that just because you don't like where we stand, there are other organizations out there who are ready and willing to compete and other challenges that we can um, start putting our energies into. I'm not going to mm -hmm. waste my time arguing. Um, so all of this is connected to a, a sort of larger question that we've been thinking about as we've undertaken this project. Uh, and that is, you know, do you see a role for union, for the church in general, um, to cultivate a sense of citizenship amongst uh, your members? Absolutely. And how do you go about doing that? Um, we have, uh, years ago, Pastor Jackson um, adopted he came up with what we call seven dimensions of a New Testament church. And one of those dimensions is enhancing society. Um, and that's just us going out into the community and just making the community a, a better place. And I think that's the responsibility of the church, any uh, in the church, the universal church, um, any church that calls themselves born again Christians. Our responsibility is to make the world a better place um, just by how we live. Mm -hmm. you know, our, our, our principles um, of what we live by um, and, and then we're supposed to share that in our communities and so and I think that's how we do it and that's just enhancing our community um, you know a lot of a lot of the things that are happening in the world today yeah and it, could, it could be better if God's church would you know be more active and so yeah we have a, we have a responsibility that we take and so um, we play a role in where our world is today. Um, people still make choices. We still, people still have to make choices as to whether or not they're gonna accept those, uh, you know, those responsibilities and those principles that we stand on. But yeah, um, this in, in the civic world and um, as well as the, the church, yeah, we, we have a responsibility just to make sure and to enhance the lifestyle of people because Jesus is better, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, he, he's better. Um, if you give your life to him, your life will be much better. You'll be able to handle situations better. You'll be able to deal with challenges if you learn how to give that to him. And so, and that's enhancing society. We're not just going to come out and just beat that over your head. We're going to love you. We're going to accept you for who you are, but we're going to try to um, help you to understand what we believe and the Bible that we believe and stand on will actually enhance your life. And so, yeah, we'll, we'll, that's, I think that's our responsibility to help make the world a better place. That sounds like a very sort of broad definition of, uh, of what you're calling ministry, right? Yes. You know, there's a, there's a faith dimension, yes. but also a community dimension. Absolutely. And, and, and so I, I gather from what I'm hearing from you that those two things are connected, right? There's not, you know, the citizenship, the civic world over here and you know, the faith experience over here, that the two things are integrated. Absolutely. Yeah, they're, they're connected. Um, they're, I mean, we have that responsibility. It's going gonna, it's gonna to look different in the church because that's what we stand on. You know, we're going to train, we're going to prepare, we're going to equip the people in the church as they come to church to be able to handle things in the world. And, but when we go out in the world, you have people who never heard of Christ, who never read the Bible, who, ne who don't know how to pray. And so our approach is gonna be different. We have to have a, a basic approach and teach them how to get there. And then we get them into the church and then we start exposing them to, to deeper uh, matters of living for Christ. And so, I mean, yeah, it's still, it's still all connected, but mm -hmm. the way we go about doing it is gonna be slightly different. Yeah, so that, that was actually my next and really last question, which is, um, has that sense of the connection between faith and citizenship evolved over time in your mind? You see it different now than perhaps when you were a younger uh, adult or even as a child? I think it's, I think it was, I think it's still the same. I think it's, it's if, if there is a difference, it was a slight difference. Mm -hmm. um, I just think, though, I think... Um, just the way 
they did it back then, um, it was more, it was more aggressive <laughs> back uh -huh. then. Right. It was more aggressive. Okay. Today, um, we can't be as aggressive, and you know, before we start um, getting the backlash. Why? Oh, uh, because of the touchy issues yes, and the controversies yes. I, that we talked about. Yeah, I, I think just just where our government is today, and and where the government has has put pushed religion and and Christianity, and and you know how people can live and, and mm -hmm. do whatever they want, the freedom to do whatever they want. I think it's not as, and I think that the church has actually taken a step back in terms of their aggressiveness. You know, we weren't browbeating or throwing scriptures back then, but we were more, uh, you know, we were more open and, and, and had more liberty. You know, people knew who the pastors were. People had mm -hmm. more respect for pastors of churches. People had more respect if you called yourself a Christian and you lived a life right. People had more respect for you. But now it's like they don't respect pastors. They don't respect Christians. They don't respect people who call themselves leaders in the church. It's, like, it's, it's just like you have to, um, it's just like we have, um, you know, an X on our backs now. And I think that the church has taken a, a step backwards. Do you have a sense of why it is that that attitude seems more pervasive now, why you have that X on your back? I, I, I always, I just say, it's, I, I, I agree. I think that it's because of, you know, just where our, where our government is with just over the last several years, just in terms of um, the laws that they have passed. Um, mm -hmm. And not only that, but I think just um, families, um, you know, the. Just, family breakdown. Yes, the breakdown of families, uh, the age of parents right, to, said, yeah. to kid ratio. So these ratio. bigger cultural trends as yeah. well as the governmental policies. Absolutely, and yeah. I think that all play, has played. It, it's changed over the years. You know, when I was growing up, um, if I, I, I was never disrespectful to any adult because, you know, there was some that, that would actually get with me. And then by the time I got home, they had already called my parents. And, mm. and then my mom, when I got home, her, her phrase was she would slap one side of my face off. And that's actually what she did. <laughs> and so, so you got it from both directions. So, I mean, we don't get that now. You know, you can't, if, if you try to scold a kid on the street for doing something wrong, he'll go home or she'll go home and tell their parents or, you know, mm. and then They'll come back instead of them jumping on their kids and punishing their kids, they'll come back with their kids and give you an earful. So I think, I think the whole family breakdown has changed as well as the government. I think that's, those are a couple of other instances as to why the church is not as um, aggressive as it used to be. I don't, I don't know if I want to say the word aggressive. I know what you mean, uh, <laughs> the op you know, open and direct. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, that's interesting. Oh, so the, Circling back a little bit to the, you know, the issue of the changes in Muncie, the economic changes and, and social changes, is there a connection between those changes and these other breakdowns and changes in the culture that, that you're talking about? I think that, I think that has played a, a huge role in the breakdown as well. Um, the family breakdown or the larger, or both? I, I'd, say, yeah. I'd say both, the mm -hmm. family and then the larger um, community, in, in the community. Yeah. Um, because with the loss of jobs, um, jobs leaving, you had some people relocate. You had some people who just lost their jobs. And jobs are a key thing for keeping families together absolutely. and functioning. And, and, and families yeah. have broken down because of that. People have gotten hooked on drugs. Mm -hmm. um, people have gotten in trouble. I've, 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 I've seen that on the police department. Sure. You know, and so how families are affected. Uh, and and if you trace it back far enough, it's because they lost a job. One of the parents lost a job, and in their depression, you know, they started experimenting with drugs, and it got to the point to where they became addicted. And now they're doing everything that they can to treat that habit and to support that habit. If it's stealing, if it's robbing, um, burglarizing houses. And then now that whole family is broken down and the kids are, you know, are being affected as well as mm -hmm. other family members. And then it just spills over into the community. And so, yeah, that's another, I believe that's another. Um, okay. 
Yeah, so that this is part of what intensifies these challenges yes. that you're seeing now. Mm -hmm. So that's really all I have to ask about, but I always like to give you the opportunity. If there's so something you think I missed or something you think you want to say, um, please go ahead and do that now. Okay. Uh, anything else to add? <laughs> no, I'm good. Well, you're, that you're case, really thorough. All right, well, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us, uh, and we'll be in touch about um, when this is up and ready to be um, seen and read. Okay. Thank so, you. Thanks for your time. The time. So.